Hi there again, this is Jeff the Sound Guy. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about church soundboards. Um, a lot of churches nowadays are having soundboard issues where they sit there and they get this cool soundboard that is all digital. It's got a nifty little screen here. There's no knobs. It's very pretty and sleek. And uh, while digital mixing boards have their place, uh, they're actually very good at, um, at quick changes, quick scene changes. Uh, you've got different things where uh, you know you can hit a button and all the sliders will move on their own and so different bands can hop up and there's different things that can happen with a mixing board uh, digital mixing boards that make it very very convenient but the one thing I want to talk about is convenience for the church if you have an analog mixing board or like if you've got a uh, digital one that at least has knobs on it pretty much anyone can use this mixing board. This is not a mixing board that you need to have someone, uh, you know, paid to come in there and do this. So basically uh, what you need to do is uh, take into consideration the fact of are you going to have volunteers running sound for your church? If you're going to have volunteers running sound, you need to have a mixing board with knobs. Something that they can actually look at and they can say this is your highs, this is your mids, this is your lows. Because digital mixing boards, while they are very cool, they are very difficult to navigate unless you've got training. What happens with churches is they end up getting the system and they spend 100, 150,000 and they end up putting in this phenomenal system, digital mixing boards and all this stuff and they don't have anyone that can run it that's a volunteer. They have to pay someone to do it. And the people who get paid to do it really have them right where they want them. And they can charge the church a lot of money. So my message to churches is, if you put in one of these systems, budget to have a couple people on staff that are going to maintain and run your sound system. Okay? People, I mean, I, it blows me away the number of churches that sit there and they have this incredible sound system, and then they don't have anyone... They don't budget to maintain it, to take care of it, to replace cables. It's like they don't think it's ever going to wear out. You don't buy a car and never change the oil or rotate the tires. And it's the same thing with sound systems. These things are used, they need to be cleaned, they need to be taken care of, and they need to be maintained. Now, that's one thing you need to budget if you're a church. The other thing you need to budget for, if you don't go with the standard sound system that most people can run, you need a budget for at least two sound people, not just one. Okay? What happens if they get sick? What happens if they don't show up? People come in, they're like, I don't even know what they've got going. Sound people, uh, <laughs> you know, when I do sound for a church or something like that, all of it's labeled. I lo label everything I possibly can because I want everyone to be able to come in here and use it. The insecure sound people, you go in there, you look at their sound boards, there's not a thing labeled. It's it's blank. They know where it is. They don't want anyone else to be able to do their job. They're holding on to their job and they're charging what they want to because no one knows what to do with it. So that is my advice. Digital versus... And, you know, actually there are digital soundboards that are... Um, have not. So don't totally knock... I'm not totally knocking digital. I'm talking the ones that need to be programmed and everything else. Those are the soundboards that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about this style. This is the best style to use, as far as I am concerned, for your small to somewhat large church. When you go into the super mega churches, you're going to have a staff. You're going to have people. You're going to have people on the cameras. You're going to have all these people that are going to be paid. Do what you want, okay? But if you are a small church and you end up getting sold on a sound system, and they say, oh, you got to have the latest, greatest sound system, you got to have all this stuff, you got to have... No, 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 no. You need to find out what your volunteers can run. If you're planning on having your volunteers run sound for your church, you need to have a sound system they can use. Anyway, that's my gripe with churches. That's my gripe with the way that they look at things. If you're a church, budget it. Budget the sound person, budget the maintenance of it. Because in five years, the thing's going to be sounding crappy and you're going to be wondering what's wrong. Well, if you didn't change the oil in your car in five years and you just drove it all over the place, it would be running crappy too. Maintain your equipment. 
have a sound team. Don't buy equipment that makes it proprietary as far as who can run it. If you want it, uh, the latest, greatest thing, that's fine, that's up to you. But don't do something that's out of what you want the soundboard to be in the end. All right, um, this is Alan Heath. This is a very, very nice board. I'd recommend this. And just for an example, this is a 40 channel board, okay? 40 channels on the soundboard. You've got 40 channels going across here. Most of these are used. There's only a few channels down here that are not used yet. But you know, you throw in your mics, you know, you got six drum mics, you got four vocals, you've got guitars and bass, backup singers, we got six vocals for choir, uh, six choir microphones, you've got your wireless lapels here, you've got your CD, your tape, your video, you've got your effects return, you've got all this stuff. And th I mean, this is a 40 channel board, and this thing is almost used up. So the other thing is that if you're a church and you're buying a board, make sure you buy a board, build a sound booth around it with a locking door to keep people out, and make sure that the church um, soundboard, sound booth, is in a protected area that people can't just take off with it. Um, everything is screwed in. Nothing is, uh, is accessible. Someone can't just come in and grab something and run. Anyway. Hopefully that's not too long. Thank you very much for watching. Again, this is Jeff, Sound Guy with Sound and Light Technicians. Please visit my website, and uh, I certainly do appreciate compliments and comments or whatever you think. All right, thanks a lot.